Kansas City University Medical School in Joplin is about to graduate its first class of new doctors this month. Joining me today to talk about this enormous milestone is the Dean of the KCU Joplin campus, Dr. Laura Roche, and graduating Dr. Callie Clark. Thanks for joining us, ladies. How are you today? Doing well, thank you. Good. So, Callie, how amazing is this for you? It's incredible. I can't believe that it's finally here after all this time, but I'm so excited that I get to be a part of this. Yeah. And you're from Joplin, right? I am from the area, yeah. And you graduated from Missouri Southern, so I we're, did. we're proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> and Dr. Rosh, you're new, right? A couple of years here Relatively in Joplin? Relatively new, yeah. Yeah, so talk years. about how the school came to be uh, how it, after the tornado. This is such an exciting story because the community for a while had been looking into expanding health care and opportunities and even the potential for opening a medical school. So it had been a dream for a while actually, over 20 years I think, through Dr. Larry McIntyre had, uh, had this vision and um, made it happen. Mm -hmm. I guess there were negotiations with Kansas City and other people and other stakeholders and uh, Mercy generously donated the property and the buildings mm -hmm. uh, following the tornado and Casey, you grabbed it and went from there. Now we're getting all these <laughs> doctors. It's amazing. Yeah, and how big is the class this year? Do you remember? Uh, right now, we uh, are graduating 146 mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. this year, and we just admitted our fourth medical school class, so four full years of medical students, 160, wow. uh, to the Joplin campus of Kansas City University. So they start, so there's a new class that starts every year, and it's just kind of like a high school right. like four, yep. every four years? Exactly. Wow. And so, Kelly, what have you cho chosen as your specialty? Uh, internal medicine is okay. what I decided to do. And what does that entail? So it covers uh, basically everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so you don't see peds. Mm -hmm. So anyone under the age of 18 normally you don't see. Um, and then anyone who's pregnant, mm -hmm. they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but basically everything else. So you can get cardiac um, to, you know, gastrointestinal to kind of a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a doctor of osteopathy, is that correct? That's you correct, mm -hmm. right, yep. And you're a doctor as well, right? Yes, an, mm -hmm. a smart woman, internal <laughs> medicine, yes, I'm also an internist, uh -huh. yep, so it's wonderful. And how long have you practiced medicine? Oh, a while. <laughs> <laughs> but asking you to tell your age. No, I, no, I, I, uh, I graduated in 1990, so okay. it was a while ago, yeah. poorly, for, well before Kelly was born, and all that stuff, but, I've been a full-time internist up until th two years ago when I took the position at Kansas City. Okay, and had you did you go to Kansas City no, University? No, I graduated from Chicago Osteopathic, oh, okay. and I'd been the department chair there in internal medicine, mm -hmm. and uh, the opportunity to move to Joplin to expand on a in a community that was welcoming and inviting mm -hmm. and wanted to grow osteopathic physicians. So. Why wouldn't I go? Right, here? yeah. Right. So, <laughs> and do you teach classes, or I'm, are you just uh, manage a, the so school? So I, I actually, I do a lot of administrative mm -hmm. stuff, and then um, once in a while, I'll pinch hit if they need help with the faculty and whatnot. I'm excited because uh, this year I'm going to go back into the community clinic and help support the, oh. the team there and see patients. Yay! That's so, nice. I was going to ask nice. if you missed that. Miss I, seeing I, patients. Oh, definitely, yeah. I definitely do. And uh, so we made room in the schedule this year to get out and do that because, you know, you have to yeah. you have to see each other. And I'm mm -hmm. trying to get more internists. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And Kelly, talk about what made you decide to be a doctor. What was your inspiration? Yeah, so I've always wanted to be a doctor um, for as long as I can remember. But what really solidified it for me was um, I had a really great friend. Her name was Nicole Johnson. Um, best friends were all middle school, high school. Actually, we went to college together. We roomed together. And she ended up getting glioblastoma, which is a brain cancer. Mm -hmm. And she ended up passing away from that mm -hmm. um, when I was in college. And I just remember going up, and I stayed with her at Barnes Jewish in St. Louis. Um, for her initial kind of evaluation and treatment and the difference that the doctors made in her uh, treatment process just really solidified my want to go into medicine because if you have a good doctor even I mean she had a uh, terrible prognosis um, but they really made her feel comfortable mm -hmm. and helped the family feel comfortable and informed in what was going on and I just wanted to do that for other people mm -hmm. And that that was probably pretty intense, wasn't it? it definitely, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Rosh, talk about the white coating ceremony. What is that about? Well, the white 
coding ceremony is a, a, a sort of a rite of passage for all physicians. It's a symbolism that we are adopting um, the, vir the virtues, the, mm -hmm. the qualities that are innate in our, our craft with mm -hmm. what we do in, in medicine. Uh, service, integrity, hard work, pursuit of excellence, mm -hmm. compassion, all those kinds of things. And uh, Kelly's a perfect example of someone who uh, embodies all those qualities. I'm so excited Thank for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, they get their white coats and, and what does that mean? Generally, they get the white coats. Um, COVID, of course, created oh, an right, interesting right, right. Uh, scenario here. But generally, within the first uh, several weeks of uh, matriculating to medical school. They'll go through a ceremony and receive their white coats because uh, the white coat you wear as a symbol when you mm -hmm. go out into the community mm -hmm. and do the vaccine clinics, right? And oh, right. Um, take blood pressures and work at the community clinic, mm -hmm. those kinds of things to identify and uh, who the students, who the students' physicians are. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice this difference in the length of the coats too, right? <laughs> oh. As they get longer, um, as you become an attending. Um, I mean, they're not dragging on I the ground, but that, yeah. <laughs> the shorter coats are uh -huh. generally uh, symbolic for in training. Right. And then uh, once you graduate, uh, Kelly will have a nice long coat. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's quite it. I bet a lot of people don't realize <laughs> that. And you were talking about the outreach that you do in the community. So you, work, you help with the community clinic and talk about the vaccine programs. Oh yeah, the vaccine programs, this has been a wonderful opportunity through our partners with the Joplin Health Department. I just want to shout out to them. They mm -hmm. are amazing and they needed some vaccinators. We mm -hmm. needed uh, some supplies and some support to be able to vaccinate, what, 2,000 people I think oh, wow. we did at one of the mm -hmm. drive through clinics out here. So all the medical students are qualified and trained uh, to give the vaccines mm -hmm. and under, under the auspices of the Joplin Health Department and in conjunction with the National Guard. Mm -hmm. And several, this is such a great community, I gotta tell you, several members of people from the community all gathered together. I mean, one woman from the Salvation Army handed me a cup of coffee, I was outside freezing. <laughs> and I'll just never forget, and I'm like, I love Joplin. <laughs> you know, it was just like wonderful. And then to see the students like serving people right. and helping and making a difference and saving lives. Mm -hmm. Like she's going to go out and do that. That just <laughs> is, I mean, I don't have words to express how wonderful right. that is. Yeah. Yeah. And did you participate in the, the clinics as well? I did it. Oh, no. Okay. And do you have this one program called Score One for Health? Can you talk about that? Yes. Yeah, Score One, it's, uh, it started up in our, our main campus up in Kansas City and then we expanded the program. It's an opportunity, again, for early clinical experience for medical students to go out into the communities and to screen uh, grade age, grade school children mm -hmm. for um, with their height, their weight, uh, their blood pressure, um, their nutritional status, their vision, their hearing. Mm -hmm. And now with the advent of the dental school being opening, we're gonna have oh, dental, yeah. uh, dental students coming out and actually doing screenings for children all over in, in the grade schools in, in Joplin. Our first year, we started out with four schools. Mm -hmm. And then before COVID, I think we had 13 schools that we participated in. And the students wow. get their white coats on and they go with the doctors and they actually look in ears and check eyes and check hearing and, and whatnot for the students and then identify them and refer them in the community mm -hmm. so that they can get treatment and get those issues addressed. Mm -hmm. And did you participate in that? I did, Even yeah. as an internal medicine, you still do all of that? Yes, actually I was part of the first year. Um, I went to a local elementary school and I did remember doing blood pressure readings on so many different kids. and. You know, I had my white coat on, and it was really the first time that I'd ever done multiple blood pressure readings, mm -hmm. and I was so nervous at the beginning because <laughs> I had never really done one, and then towards the end, I was like, I'm a pro at this. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's great for the community because we get to screen these kids when they're so young and when we can really make a difference in their life. Um, and then it gave me such great experience too because then I was a lot more comfortable going into the hospital setting mm -hmm. doing, you know, simple things like blood pressure readings. And you know, at that point, you can influence a child who thinks they might want to be a doctor, but and then they see you be a doctor. Exactly. Right. Yes. And how exciting is that for you? Mm -hmm. It was amazing. You know, I think the more experience and um, that they get seeing us helping them, uh, the more that they want to potentially become a doctor. So. And it's a good experience for them rather than a scary experience. Right. Because right. most kids only think about, oh, I'm going to get a shot. 
Yep. And parents always threaten kids, you don't take your medicine, you've got to go <laughs> to the doctor. Give you a shot. Yeah, so it's always a scary thing. <laughs> right. But you make it, you know, not so scary. Yep. And Dr. Rosh, talk about I understand that residency programs, it's very complicated. It's tied to Medicare, Medicaid funding, which a lot of people don't know. Talk about the residency program here in Joplin, you know, what disciplines there are and how important that is to have those. Oh, I'll tell you. So even though Kelly's graduating with her degree, Oh, bus for doctors. <laughs> We've got more training to go through. And they say, you're not really a doctor until you do your residency. And I tell you, for the continuity of training to bring students in, to get them all the education preparation work that they do prior to entering their residency program. And you know, there's residencies. Mm -hmm. And we have one in Joplin at the Freeman Health Clinic run by Dr. Rob McNabb. It's the mm -hmm. internal medicine program. We've got the ENT program with Dr. Larry McIntyre. There's OB-GYN. There's so many. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're working on opening more as well because you recognize in order to graduate the students, we'd have to create those opportunities right. for them to train. So they go through a process where they have to interview and match, <laughs> and it's quite stressful. Mm -hmm. You thought getting into medical school was stressful. Well, now they have to get their postgraduate training spot. and. Once you secure that, then you go in depending on what specialty. So um, internal medicine is four years, right? You're three now, oh, no, actually. Down to three oh, years. Yeah. Oh, boy, hey. <laughs> but um, in the old osteopathic tradition, yes. we did an extra year, a transitional year, mm -hmm. where we trained in all the specialties. But some specialties have up to five years, some of the surgical oh. specialties. And then you can subspecialize following that. You might want to do a fellowship mm -hmm. following that specialty. So it is a complicated process, you're right. right. Yeah, yeah. So, And we were talking there that there has only ever been one dermatologist in the area for the longest time. And Callie was saying that now there's another Yeah, Freeman just got another dermatologist. So, so that might help in, because you have to have that type of doctor in that area in order to be able to have a residency, correct? Right. They t traditionally, they have to go through their rotations and train with a preceptor, mm -hmm. and it's always helpful. That's why you see a lot of students move up to the big urban areas mm -hmm. where there's much more practicing physicians and all, you know options for subspecialties. So the, they start, the growth starts slow, mm -hmm. but the university is very well aware of the importance of if we want to keep doctors in the community, we need to have these training programs available to them because I think studies say 80% of the doctors who uh, do their residency in an area will stay in stay that there. area. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, we have to get a dermatology residency. <laughs> <Or right. Yeah. laughs> and so how does that work um, for you, Callie? What do you do your first year of residency? So your first year of residency is what they call your intern year. So it, it's different depending upon what specialty you decide to go into. For me, going into internal medicine, um, I'll be doing a lot of different things. So actually my first month I'll be on nights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that'll be quite an experience. Mm -hmm. And then so I'll, I'll do a variety of different things like emergency medicine or cardiology, just to kind of get me involved in a lot of different areas in the hospital. And then as the years progress, you can kind of pick more what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So if I have an interest in cardiology, um, the next couple of years I could do more rotations in cardiology. Okay. And so the patients you see as an internal medicine doctor, they don't have a particular age, correct? Or is it usually older? It's just whoever's in the hospital. Right. So yeah, it can be, you know, 25 year olds up, up to the end of life. So. And what type of um, problems do internal medicine doctors usually see? Is it just... So I kind of like to think of internal medicine doctors as like the conductor of the orchestra. So if a patient comes in and they have, you know, a problem with their stomach and a problem with their heart, um, they will see a cardiologist and then they'll see a gastrointestinal, mm -hmm. you know, doctor. And so there has to be someone that kind of manages all these different things. Right. And that's kind of what the internal medicine doctor does. So we say, okay, cardiologist, you know, what do you think is best for the patient? And then what do you think is best for the patient? And then we can, we can sit down with the patient and say, okay, this is what has been recommended. Um, and this is what we're going to do moving forward. So I think, you know, in the old way of medicine, it was a lot of paternalistic, this is what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the patients would leave the hospital and not even know what happened, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the problem arose when they didn't know what medications to take. They didn't know how to follow up. 
So for me, I chose internal medicine because I think you really have an opportunity to make an impact. If you can just sit down and talk mm -hmm. with the patient and say, this is what's happening. What questions do you have? What can I help you to understand? And when you do that, the patient has a much better chance mm -hmm. that they're going to come out better. Mm -hmm. And some of the best doctors that I've ever had do that very thing. Yep. They take the time. Some doctors, you feel like you're just on an assembly line. Right. You're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. Right. But then th those doctors that sit down and take the time to mm -hmm. ask you those questions, because that matters. Exactly, exactly. In a patient's health care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Dr. Rosh, talk about the advancements or the technology that you guys use at the medical school. Oh, this we have, uh, <laughs> we have so many opportunities, and I'm really excited now because they're, saying that the stethoscope is being replaced by the ultrasound. And <laughs> yeah. Kelly, have you had an opportunity to train with the ultrasound? I have, the, the handheld ones. The oh, handheld yeah. ultrasounds, because they didn't have those, right? right. You know, now yeah. doctors use, but now they can use an ultrasound and look even further. So we're real excited. A lot of our curriculum is being adjusted and modified to incorporate um, that. In addition, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and simulated patients, and we also have standardized patients. Mm -hmm. So standardized patient is um, a, a person, a live mm -hmm. person that can have a disease and they come in and the medical students question them and address them and treat them as they would. They're working in a clinic, oh. but the patient's standardized. So he has an illness, he or she, and they have to make sure the student learns to communicate, to mm -hmm. document that shows empathy mm -hmm. and then has to go out and come up with an assessment and a mm -hmm. treatment plan and all those kinds of things just as they might do in a real clinic mm -hmm. and it's it provides a nice segue into what they actually have to do we hope that it makes them less worried when they actually have to go out and take care of a real patient. Did it help you? It helped me. I will say it helped me. Um, it is a little bit different when you have a real patient, but it, it was definitely very helpful. And so they develop a bedside manner, basically, right. in right. medical school, right? Mm -hmm. It's their personality and the way they interact with the patient. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I took a lot of that. We, we had to do multiple uh, tests with our standardized mm -hmm. patients and towards the end of our second year. So like I said, the first two years of medical school, we spend mostly in, in um, classes throughout at the university. And then the second two years of medical school, we'll go to a hospital and do rotations mm -hmm. throughout. And towards the end of my second year, we had to see a number of standardized patients back to back to back mm -hmm. to back. And I remember just being so nervous. <laughs> but when I finally got into the hospital and I had to do that in real life, it was so much easier mm -hmm. knowing that I had already done it. The worry was worse right. than the actual. Right, exactly. <laughs> and what was it like learning to be a doctor during a pandemic? I mean, how hard was yeah, that? Yeah, it, it was definitely difficult. Um, so. The university was really great and they set up a lot of online courses for us because um, kind of towards the beginning, hosp hospitals basically said uh, no to medical students. Mm -hmm. Just there was a high liability chance and we weren't sure uh, all the you know facts about the pandemic and how it was gonna turn out. Um, but the university set up a lot of online courses that were really helpful. Um, and then they worked really hard to help to get us back into the hospitals uh, with proper, you know, personal protective equipment, um, gave us access to that. And I felt like when we did get to go back, I, I wasn't worried about uh, being exposed or anything right. like that. Mm -hmm. And you contracted it, right? When I did end up okay. having it. Yep. And we did okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> and talk about your connection with the university because you just, you're not only a graduate, but your dad used to, or your, your father-in-law. Used to work yes, here, yeah. So Robert Clark, um, he actually started the radio station here mm -hmm. at Missouri Southern. He was one of my professors. <laughs> wow. Yeah, way back when <laughs> he hired Judy Siles. Yeah. Um, so he actually just passed away in December oh. of last year, um, but he was definitely a pillar to this community, and it's such a blessing for me to be able to be on the other side and to be benefiting from this and all the work that he put in. So I'm very grateful. That's for awesome. Him. Mm -hmm. And so, Dr. Rush, what do you see? going forward now that you're graduating the first class what's next for the school oh we you know <laughs> we recognize that in this ever-changing world that we in more integration of technology right more integration of opportunity telemedicine mm -hmm. another example that came oh, to fruition during the pandemic um, to look for also uh, interprofessional education and training and experiences because we don't practice medicine in a vacuum by ourselves. Right. We work with social workers and nurses and physical therapists and uh, that, that's really important for physicians to train in that arena as well so that they identify 
tools that they use and mm -hmm. when to refer and how to get support and how to communicate. It's going to be a different world and we're recognizing now that some of the soft skills that were important um, to phys physicians it used to, you know, there's a heavy academic slant, but to be able to communicate, mm -hmm. to have compassion, it's really hard to teach somebody that. So, oh, yeah. So, but like that, common sense. It's right. hard to teach somebody common sense. <laughs> right. right. And th that's the, exactly what you were uh -huh. describing, how you want your physician to be, to uh -huh. be able to work with you, listen uh -huh. to you, show compassion for you. Uh -huh. And th that involves a good deal of emotional intelligence. Uh -huh. Kelly had a good mom and dad and parents and family <laughs> that raised her because um, those are skills that I think start when you went from day one, from when you're born. So. And they say doctors make the worst patients. Um, is that true? In your I think experience? that's probably yeah. true. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, we're great. Not me. We're perfect. <laughs> um, and Callie, Callie and I were talking about also: um, is, is medical school or is being a doctor anything like the television shows? <laughs> I told her probably not. <laughs> How about you? I won't even watch yeah. them. I just like, get so annoyed. I'm like, no doctor would do that. I know, right? No doctor would say that. And I, my daughter's like, is that what you do? Shut that off. <laughs> just don't even turn it off. Yeah. That's too yeah. funny. Well, I really appreciate you both being here. And congratulations, Callie, on Thank your you so much. graduation. Thank you. We're super excited. And you're obviously excited for oh, them. Oh, I know. I'm trying to be calm here. <laughs> so excited for them. And do you like Joplin? You said the, oh, the community Oh, I tell you, great. it's the best kept secret. I mean, it's it's wonderful. The mm -hmm. people are so friendly. I, I had to buy donuts for the lab, and I was walking out, and this man, like, opens the door for me and smiles at me. I'm like, oh, this is, I love it here. Who does that? You know, just the little gestures. How are you? And yeah. it just warms the cockles of my heart. And for our students to train in this kind of environment where they get exposed to that kindness mm -hmm. and the support and the passion. People are so excited in the right. community to have a med medical school here and have medical students. They're wonderful ambassadors for our school and our program. Thank you. Yes. That's great. Well, thank you so much, thank ladies. We appreciate thank it. You. And I want to thank the Dean of KCU Joplin Campus, Dr. Laura Roche, and Callie Clark, part of the first ever graduating class from the Joplin Campus of this medical school. Uh, this is Newsmakers on KGCS-TV from the Ruth Copeland Studios here at Missouri Southern State University. I'm Bobby Potroff. We'll see you again soon. That Joplin community has a state-of-the-art medical school. The campus is just beautiful and it's very conducive for us to study in. Nothing like this is done smoothly. We never gave up. KCU was my dream school. It was actually my dream school since the fall of my freshman year of college. And so I did research on it, I learned about the admissions requirements, and that was how I set my goals over the next four years. Joplin is a very good market for medical school in that it's a rural setting with major hospitals. Economically, it would be a great boon to this area. Secondly, we are in desperate need of doctors for this area. What we wanted to do was, as partner with someone who could really help us do what we needed to do. Kansas City University Joplin was an opportunity to impact the health and well-being of the southwest corner of the state. The tornado is a very important role in, in the development of this medical school. virtually every Monday afternoon for 18 months. There hasn't been any situation that I know of where $30 million plus has been raised in this area, but that did not deter us from saying we can do that, and we never gave up. A 
close partnership with the community is what makes this project such a success. The impact of this school is going to be felt not only by my generation and my children's generation, but for generations to come. So in the long run, I hope that this education gives me the platform to establish a practice in Joplin, to become a colleague to these local area physicians who inspired me in the first place and who wrote my letters of recommendation and have invested so much into me. It really was like the phoenix rising from the ashes, where a medical school now stands where a hospital once was, to train the next generation of physicians and surgeons for Joplin and the community.